worship of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join me in our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, your presence is palpable. Your love is tangible. We thank you, God, for allowing us to worship you this day. I thank you, God, for every soul here who loves you, who worships you, who wants to be like you. Lord, be with us as we worship. Help our hearts be lifted up to you. Thank you for carrying our burdens and taking them from us, even though we want to cling to them. Lord, be with us. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading this morning comes from Psalm 106, verses 1 through 6 and 19 through 23. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you deliver them, that I may see prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your heritage. Both we and our ancestors have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. They made a calf at Horeb and worshipped a cast image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt. The wondrous works in the land of Ham and the awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore, he said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath, from destroying them. Amen. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Eroda and Psyche, to be in the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of the, my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worth of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
from Matthew chapter 22, beginning with the first verse. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatted calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited are not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe. He asked him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendees, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Thanks be to God. Are you chosen? Are you chosen? Not a rhetorical question. Are you chosen, church? Yes. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God that you know it. So what does it mean to be chosen? What should your life reflect? Because you know you're chosen. Better yet, who should your life reflect? Because you know you're chosen. Trust me, this is a 
story that Jesus used to make people think, to open their eyes to a different reality than what they only saw themselves in their circumstances of oppression, in their circumstances of want, of need, of sorrow, of pain, of grief. And yes, even their circumstances of joy, Jesus offers this story to tell them there is something more. There is something so much greater than what you see here and now. Just listen. Just love. Just learn. Some did learn. Some chose to follow Jesus in that day and time. People are still learning. People are still choosing to follow Jesus in our day and time. And some people choose that because God has let their life intersect with each of you. It is a huge responsibility to offer the gift of Jesus to the world around us. We have so many restrictions due to the pandemic. You say, well, preacher, how do you do that? How do you share the love of Jesus when I'm afraid to leave my home? How can I offer compassion to somebody when I'm not allowed to touch them? What's it like to show justice and mercy in this time of great turmoil in our world? Not just in our country, but in the entire world this is happening. How can I help those in need when I can't even help myself? During these uncertain times, this message is clear. Jesus offers great love to all who are created. And we, the church, should do likewise. This portion in scripture where the king comes after the wedding banquet hall is filled with guests. After the horrible things that occurred before the wedding hall was filled with guests, and he notices somebody they are not wearing a wedding robe. Do you even understand what that means? Carol, was everybody wearing a wedding robe at your wedding yesterday that you went to? Yeah. Was everybody wearing a wedding robe at the wedding Brian and I officiated yesterday? I pray so. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if everybody had a wedding robe on that day. I'm not 100% sure. But I pray that the message of God's love for all God created, and the message of Jesus Christ and what he offered for all, for the forgiveness of sins, his very self, his very life, his very being, was the message that people took away yesterday. Yes, we were celebrating a beautiful couple, and yes, it was a wonderful time of celebration, but more importantly, we were there in worship. We were there and worship our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to celebrate the love that Jesus Christ instilled in these two young people in such a way that their hearts were transformed, that no matter what, they were willing to commit themselves to loving each other. That is a beautiful thing. There is nothing in the world that tells young people that that's what they're supposed to do anymore. They received it. And they're going to build their life on that foundation from yesterday forward. The wedding robe in this passage isn't what people were actually wearing. Please understand this is a story. And the people might not have understood this piece. And they think, what a horrible king. He wanted guests for his son's wedding, but yet here's this person that came willingly because he was invited. And now he's getting thrown out into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So please understand what that means. Weeping and gnashing of teeth, utter darkness. That's the place of separation from God. Not that God separates God's self from us, but when we separate ourselves from God through our sin, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Out of the darkness. Not a place 
place we want to be. It's not a place we want anybody to be. Jesus tells them, for many are called, but few are chosen. St. Mark's United Methodist Church is a call. St. Mark's United Methodist Church, the beloved, the community, the body of Christ. Are we chosen? Yes. Hallelujah, church. Let's be a little enthusiastic today. Are you chosen? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. Let me hear what it is that you believe. Let God hear what it is that you believe. Saying together as a response to the word, I believe in God the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, buried, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father among us. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As a chosen people, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please pray. We confess that we have sinned against in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. Most merciful God, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways the glory of your name. Amen. At this time, please pray in silence to your Lord and Savior. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. At this time, we can offer one another a sign of Christ's peace and love. Christ peace be with you. Christ peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Please rise as the doxology is played and we bring our offering forward. Jesus' holy name.
we give you thanks. As we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.